Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ma'am and uh, everybody. Uh, we are from the second group. Today we will uh, continue uh, the presentations about the new topic in our course, ELT, Assessment and Innovation. Okay. Uh, there are three uh, main topics that will be presented today. The first one is principles of language assessment. The second one is validity and reliability. And the last one is achieving beneficial backwash. Okay, the first one is principle of language assessment and it will be presented by uh, Mem Effie. So Mem Effie, time is yours. Okay. Thank you, Noor. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, class. And thank you, Mem Isma. Okay, I will start... Uh, <clears throat> about the principles of language assessment. First, what is the assessment? Assessment is the, the one component of teaching and activities. By doing assessment, teachers can hopefully gain every aspect of the An aspect that plays a crucial role in assessment in test. A good test is constructed by considering the principles of language assessment. They are practicality, validity, reliability, authenticity, and respect or backwards. All right. The first, practically. Practically can be simply defined as the relationship between available resource for the test. For example, human resources, material resources, time, and etc. And resources which will be required in the design, development, and use of the test by Bachmann and Palmer, 1996, page 35 until 36. And Brown in 2004, page 19, defines that practically is in terms of cost, time, administration, scoring, and evaluation. Okay. What about the cost? What is cost? Cost is the test should not too expensive to conduct it. Okay. The cost for the test has to stay within the budget. I went conducted a test that requires excessive budget. Uh, for uh, we need to think about what do you think if a teacher conduct an ulangan harian for one class consists thirty student in SMP level that spend lima ratus ribu rupiah, five hundred uh, rupiah for every student. Is it practical in terms of cost? We can answer by ourselves. And then time. Time, the test should stay within appropriate time constraint. The test should not to be long or too short. Apalagi uh, kelas SD SMP ya. Guru-guru mereka mau finish the test. What do you think if a teacher want to conduct a test of language proficiency that it will take a student 10 hours to complete? Is that practical in terms of time? Okay, and administration. Administration, the test should, be, should not be too complicated or complex to conduct. The test should be quite simple to administer. Okay, what do you think if a teacher in a remote or who his or her student know nothing, know nothing about computer conducts a test, which require the test takers to at least know how to interact with the computer in order to be able to complete the test. It is practically in terms of administration. Answer by ourselves. And the last, scoring or evaluation. The scoring or evaluation process will avoid into the time allocation. A test will be accompanied with scoring rubrics. 
the answer and so on to make it easy to score or evaluate. And yeah, what do you think if a teacher conduct a test that it will take a student a couple minutes to complete and take the teacher as ever a horse to score or, or evaluate? Is it critical in, in terms of scoring or evaluation? Okay, we can discuss it together. Okay, I think that's enough from me. Next, I will back to Norbaiti. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mamapi. Okay, the next uh, presenter will be present about validity, and it will be presented by Indri. So, Indri, time is yours. Unmute your microphone, please. Okay, thank you, Noor, and also um, my friends and ma'am. Good afternoon. Okay, so today I would like to explain about validity, uh, reliability, and also authenticity about, uh, about the test. And the first one is uh, about the validity. Okay, before we come to the validity of a test, we need to know first, what is validity actually? Uh, a test is said to have content validity if the content constitutes a, repre a, a representative sample of a language skill structure and etc., which it is meant to be considered. In a short language, it can be said that a validity is uh, a test exactly measure what it, it is supposed to measure. Means that the test really measure what uh, we need to measure. And the test should include a proper sample of relevant structures. Next, Noor. Okay. Uh, in a validity, uh, there are Actually, there are five uh, validity content. The first is about the content validity, the criterion of validity, construct validity, and the last is about the uh, phase validity. Uh, before we come to the criterion of uh, related to validity, we need uh, to know first about the content validity and validity of a test. Uh, actually, content validity is the correlation between the content of the test and the language skill structure, which is meant to be measured, has to be crystal clear. Means that uh, the contents and uh, content of the test and also the language uh, is clear. And the test terms should really uh, represent the course objective. And the second one, there is a criterion related to the validity. Uh, actually, criterion validity is emphasized on the relationship between the test score and also the outcome. And the test score should really represent the criterion that is intended to measure in the test. Uh, actually, the criterion of related validity uh, divided into two uh, kinds, and the first one is about the concurrent validity, and the second one is about the predictive validity. What is the concurrent validity? Concurrent validity established when the test and the criterion are administered at about uh, the same time. And it is also depend on how many the function are, te are tested in the component and also how representative they are of the complete set of the functions included in the objective. And the second one is uh, the predictive, predictive validity. Uh, while the concern, concurrent validity uh, focus on the established uh, when the test and the criterion are administered, the uh, predictive validity concerned the degree to which a test can predict uh, candidates' future performance and also the criterion measure. It may, might be an assessment of the student or could be the outcome of the course. For example, uh, we do the validations of the 
placement test. Because of why? Because uh, we need uh, some criterion uh, which uh, can be used when we uh, want to place the student uh, in the class. Next, Nora. Okay, and the third one is about the construct validity. Uh, actually, construct validity is the concept or theory which are and underlying the usage of the certain ability, including the language ability. And a test is said to uh, have a construct validity if it can be demonstrated that it measures just the ability which it is supposed to measure. And a construct validation is a research activity, the means by which theory are put to the test and are confirmed, uh, modified, and abandoned. The example of construct validity is, um, for example, we want to uh, test the student ability in reading. So uh, the test that we will uh, give to the student uh, should uh, be the test that will measure the student ability in reading test. Next, Nur. Apa ini? Ah, okay. And the last one is the face validity. What is the face validity? Uh, face validity is uh, it looks to other tester, teachers, moderator, and also students as if it is measure what it is supposed to measure. And a test is said to have face validity if uh, it looks as if it did measure what is supposed to measure. And any published test should supply details of its validation without which its validity it can hardly be judged by the potential per for, for example, in speaking tests, face validity can be shown by speaking activities as the main activities in the test. And also, the test should be focused on student activity in speaking, not anything else. Next, Nur. Okay, the next is about the reliability. If the validity we uh, talk about the test should measure what need to be tested and reliability, uh, a test is said uh, re reliable if the test has stability over a variety of conditions in which the result should be obtained. In a simple language, we can say that reliability is the consist consistency of the score that will be obtained by the test. Next, Nora. Okay, uh, uh, in reliability, yeah, uh, the first one I have explained before, and the second one is about the reliability coefficients. Uh, actually, reliability coefficient, uh, I like the validity coefficient, and the ideal reliability coefficient is one, because reliability coefficient allow us to compare the reliability of a test. And uh, a test which a uh, reliability coefficient of one is uh, which will uh, give uh, precisely the same result for a particular set of candidates regardless of when it is happened to be administered. But a test which had reliability coefficient zero will give set of result quiet and connected with each other. So if we want to make sure that our test is really is reliable or not, yeah, we can uh, check it uh, by using the reliability coefficient and it should be one, not zero. Next, Noor. Okay, and the second one is about the standard error of measurement and true score. Actually, a standard error of measurement is used to make statement about the probability that a candidate's true score is within a certain number of points of the score they actually obtained in the test. And also, all published tests should provide users with not only the reliability coefficient, but also the standard error of measurement. And we need uh, we have a standard uh, how uh, a test uh, can do mistake and it call as standard error. Next, Nur. Okay. 
Okay, and uh, the next one is about the score of reliability. Uh, actually, the score uh, reliability is any uh, one score that would give the same score uh, on two occasion, and it will be the same score as would be given by any other scorer on either occasion. And the possibility to quantify the level of agreement by given different score on different occasions uh, by means of a score reliability coefficient, which can be interpreted in a similar way as test reliability coefficient. So the score of reliability is uh, in similar way uh, as the test reliability coefficient. Next, Nor. Okay. Uh, the next one is uh, the steps. How to make our test more variable. Uh, the steps can be taken uh, if we want to make a test to our student. Uh, the first is we should take enough samples of behavior. And the second one is uh, don't allow the candidates too much freedom. And the third one is uh, write unambiguous items. And the fourth one is provide clear and explicit instructions. And the fifth one is ensure that tests are well laid out and perfectly leg legible and candidates should be familiar with format and testing items and provide uniform and non destruction conditions of the administrations and we should uh, also use items that permit scoring which is as objective as possible and the next one is provide a detailed scoring key and train scores and also agree acceptable response and appropriate score at outset of scoring and identity uh, five candidates by number, not by the name. And the last one is employ multiple independent scoring. Next, Nur. Okay, the last one is about the authenticity. Actually, authenticity is deal with the real world. Authenticity is the degree or of correspondence of the characteristic of a given language task task to the feature of a target language task. It is based on brown and Teachers should construct a test with the test item are likely to be used or, in, or applied in the real context of daily life. So if we make a, a, a test, we need uh, to uh, make sure that the word that we use in that test is really understood by our student. That's why, and here, we, we, uh, if we make a test, we need to use or apply uh, the word in the real context or uh, of the daily life. And Brown also proposed consideration that might be helpful, helpful to present authenticity in the task. The first one is the language in the task is natural as possible. The second one is the item contextual, contextualized rather than isolated. And the third one is topics are meaningful, relevant, and interesting to the learners. And the fourth one is some thematic organizations to items is provided such as the true uh, story or episode. And the last one is the task represent or closely approximate real world task. Okay, okay friends, that is the explanation for me. Back to Nor Baiti. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for Indri. Okay, I will continue the next topic uh, for this presentation. Uh, the next topic is about achieving beneficial backwash because if we want to do a test, it should have the backwash, the effect. So first, let's see what does the backwash mean. Okay, so according to Hadis, like uh, in 1989, backwash means uh, the effect of testing on teaching and learning. And also, uh, the effect itself has, uh, it can be positive effect or maybe it can be negative. So as a teachers, we has the ends that we should have the, uh, we should achieve the positive effect, okay? So that the students can feel the positive uh, about the test and they can get something uh, meaningful from the test and then they can learn something from the test. So. This is really important. And how we achieve the beneficial backwash. So 
there are some points that should be considered carefully. Okay, the first one is test the ability whose development you want to incorrect. Okay, uh, for example, if we want to test uh, the student's oral ability, especially speaking, so we should give the speaking ability, speaking test, don't give them another a test. But Hedges in his book suggested that it is important for the teachers uh, to not focus only one um abilities only but the teacher should relate it or link other abilities to this uh to to another one so all of the skills should have a sufficient portion with um in the test so it's really important because uh after skills should be given sufficient weight in relation after uh, other abilities and then the second one is sample widely and unpredictably okay uh here as we know that the meaning of the sample is uh it's representative uh as far as possible from the full scope of what is specified okay if we want to make a test okay so the teachers have to make the questions, uh, the new formulation, okay? So for example, like if we want to make a test, it's better for the teacher to not take the same question what, uh, what when the teacher have given to the last uh, examination, okay? So it should be unpredictable, okay? And Un unpredictable. So if you just give the same question when you give the question for the last students, it will be ah this the student can predict the question easily. So they will get the score very well. So we should formulate the new question for the new test. So it is one of the points where we want to achieve the beneficial backwash. And then uh in making the question the teacher should not focus on one topic only but it should be a wider range okay the teacher should take uh the topic from the last two weeks or maybe the last three weeks or maybe in the first week so it should be put uh in the questions it will make sure that the students really achieve the, the, the teaching process. So it is also one of the criteria that should be done by the teachers. Okay, and then the next one is use direct testing. Okay, uh, use direct testing, as, especially in a productive skill, like speaking and writing. Uh, because if uh, the teachers don't give the direct testing, the student will not be more motivated when they uh, get a test. So just avoid indirect testing, just do direct uh, the direct testing, it's better. And then um, make testing criteria reference. Okay, here test, um, testing is not the criterion reference but the criterion will be um, the the goals for the teachers to have uh, a clear pictures about what they need to achieve so it's like um, it will be their motivation oh i should achieve this uh, critical reverence such as um a target or a goal for the student that this should be achieved in every topic but the testing is not the criterion but criterion is the goal for them okay the next is um best achievement test on objective okay here as uh, sometimes we know that the teachers uh, forget that they uh forgot that 
uh, do not base their test on achievement, uh, on learning outcomes. Okay, so on objective, it is mean it means that a learning outcomes of the course. So there are so be three angle that should be considered or maybe should be really thought by teachers like a uh, three angle like learning uh, objective and then learning activities and then assessment so these three things should be uh, aligned should be matched so the teacher can uh, focus on assessment only or the methodology only but these three things must match to each other so this is the Okay, um, the next one is ensure test is done and understood by students. So if we want to make a test, just make sure that the technique that we have should be should um, have been practiced before. So the student or the teacher will not be confused when they get the test. So just make sure it has been done before and they can understand what the test is going to look like. And then the next one is where necessary provide assistance to teachers. So when the teachers does um, are not aware how to how to uh, evaluate the students' productive skill, uh, maybe the teachers need to train uh, how to evaluate the the skill. For example, like using rubrics or maybe behaviors or something like that. There are so many details about this. And the last one is counting the cost. Okay, the, counting the cost. Um, as what um, I've explained before, that the test should be practically, and then uh, a good test actually. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, we should consider the cost and also the time that we spend. So, and also we should uh, make sure that the test can be analyzed and also interpreted because. We don't focus on the score only, but we should interpret the result of the test. That, uh, what the uh, from the test, what is the students difficult about the topic, and what is their uh, difficulties, and then what is the easiest one. So we need to interpret everything, something like that. Okay, uh, that's all from our presentation. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.